just want to know as a part of your practice, do you practice um, uh, transcribing solos? I have transcribed solos, but there's this guy in Washington, D.C. named Andrew White III, and he has transcribed every note that Coltrane has played, and they're absolutely correct. Wow. Yeah, if you can play them, <laughs> if you can play them, they're right. And his name is Andrew White III, and his company is called Andrew's Music. He's in Washington, D.C., and he is seriously bad. Seriously bad. So I do some transposing, but I study Andrew's uh, transcriptions, and I call it my Dead Sea Scrolls. You know, when you get when you get all of the transcriptions of interstellar space, and you look at that stuff, and you start practicing that, it's like studying the Dead Sea Scrolls. You know, it's serious. Yeah. So that's what that's that's what I do. And then I listen to myself. You know, there's so many different ways to play that we forget sometimes what our music is, you know. We forget that it is an individual opportunity to play what we feel. And we spend so much time trying to play like somebody else, trying to get somebody else's stuff together, that we don't even know how we feel, you know. Once you learn the chord scales, once you learn the chords, then you have a choice. Of course you have people that you like to hear. You know, I grew up listening to Coltrane. I love Coltrane. I grew up listening to Wayne Shorter. I grew up listening to all of these great, great players. But at a certain point in your life, you come to a thing where you say, well, what? yeah, I know what he does. I understand what he does. Now, what do I think about this thing? How do I feel? How do I feel about this thing? And then that's when you create your voice. That's when you step out and you become who you are. You know. Uh, Ernie, before you get back to the uh, uh, warm up that this gentleman asked, why did you choose your present instrument as opposed to a Yamaha or a Selmer? It plays more open. It has a rounder sound, and all of the instruments, all of the saxophones that you see and you buy are Selmer copies. All the Chinese dudes are making Selmer copies. All the Japanese dudes are making Selmer copies. And so if you want to sound that way, that's cool. But if you hear something else, you have to go somewhere else. You know? And the Cowworth is not made like a Selmer. It's open. The bore is open. I believe in putting a lot of air through my instrument. See, when you put a, when you put a, when you put a lot of air, it doesn't mean you play loud. Mm -hmm. It just means you play thoroughly. What happens is it tunes up your instrument. When you're, blowing the, when you're blowing the same air column all over your instrument and you open your throat and you drop your jaw, your altissimos are going to be in tune, the bottom of your horn is going to be in tune, you're going to have flexibility. <laughs> Everything out. 
And so yeah. this instrument, you can put a lot of air through, mm -hmm. and it doesn't break up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, also, all of these instruments are made out of a thinner gauge of metal. They don't hold up. I, try, I call this my BMW of the saxophone. I go all over the world with this. I drop it. Everything, everything that can happen has happened to this poor saxophone. Just because I'm working every day. You pick it up, it plays. When I played other instruments, every time I came back from a tour, it went in the shop. Every time I came back from a tour, it went in the shop. This instrument, it just keeps playing, you know. I mean, of course I go and I get things touched up, things that I can't do myself. Of course I get it fixed when it needs to be fixed. But it just plays, and it plays in tune, and it's well made, you know. So, and the gauge of the metal, there's more metal in the metal, you know. It's like instruments used to be.